three, two, one. Boom! And welcome to the Big Honker Podcast. Did you know? It ain't fucking did you know. What are you talking about? Oh, shit. It's football podcast. God almighty. Well, we're doing one of them next. What fucking day are you on? We're NFL Pick'em brought to you by Mitch Hall Chevrolet in Haskell, Texas. That's MitchHallHaskell.com or MitchHallChevrolet.com, Haskell, Texas. I think I screwed that up, too. Probably Just not so. my day today. Not your day. On cold medicine. Got allergies. Perfect. With us today. Gotta take that ivermectin. Mr. NBA, the LeBron James <laughs> fanboy, Mr. Nate Coldiron. Nate, how are you doing, sir? Good, guys. How are you? Is, Nate, is LeBron James the greatest player ever in your mind? It's debatable. It's, it's debatable. I would have to give longevity has been on his side. There is no doubt about that. And I don't know how you could have a list and him not be the top five ever. But when it comes to being the dog, Michael Jordan is still the biggest dog of all time. Hundred percent. I saw a st- I saw a clip yesterday. I love Shaquille O'Neal and Charles Barkley. I do not like basketball. I'm not. You couldn't pay me to watch a basketball game these days. But I love to watch their clips. Them and Don Rickles' clips are my favorite clips, and I get them all the time on my feed. The algorithms. But they asked Shaq to name the top ten players of all time, top five, and he did not put himself on that list. And I was and they humble. Yeah. And the guy asked him, he goes, So you're not a top five guy. He goes, No, what are you? He goes, number six. He goes, top twenty for sure, maybe top ten. But I thought that was really nice from a guy that is but there's not a nicer guy in the world than Shaquille O'Neal. Right. Yeah, for what he does. Yeah, he does a lot of good folks. But anyway, so you're the basketball guy. Um I have a hard time watching the NBA now because it's not the same game that I grew up in the eighties watching. You knew young guys, you flat bill wearing dudes. Yeah, you Young, young have LeBron. I'll take Michael Jeez. and the bad boys from Detroit any day. In nineteen eighty nine, my favorite player was Tom Chambers. So I've been I've been around it for a long time. So I'm going to ask Andy a question: <laughs> Who's Tom Chambers? No clue. I don't either. No clue. Who's but Tom I can Ch- I can tell you uh, the game is changing on every level now. So like even when you go watch a high school basketball oh, yeah. game, it's all threes. There's no there's nothing in the paint. No body. You know, no checking or anything like that. So like it has changed at every single level. It's a it's a social media one on one. All you can do is g- give me the ball, and teammates don't matter anymore. It just it's kind of aggravating to see because growing up it was always team ball. Yeah. You, you play as a team, you win as a team. Now it's like I I I don't care about anything else, and it's just the way of the world, I guess, with social media and trying to get clicks and nils coming up. It's just you know it's everybody for himself, which is fine, but at the same time you got to take your you know, your slice when you can get it, I you guess. Know, it's crazy. There's little there's very little money for NIL basketball players like there are football players. The the center for Ohio State probably makes more than their best basketball player does. Oh, without without yeah, question. nobody nobody yeah. pays attention to that. Um I wish we could have a time machine. I would love to see the bad boys from Detroit play the Golden State guys from a couple of years ago when they were had a Durant and all them stuff. The physicality versus the other. I'd like to really see that matchup because I think if you did a time machine in the NFL and you took the not, the Dallas Cowboys from 1992, I don't think the Dallas Cowboys from 1992 can beat the Kansas City Chiefs of the last couple of years because football players, bigger, faster, different game. But basketball is the same, but I would love to see the physical matchup of the bad boys of Detroit versus the Splash Brothers and see how that would actually have played out. I think it would have been very interesting. It would have been, it would have been an interesting for sure, but you talk about speed and just – how fast the game is now and how many points are being scored. It's just a totally different game. So I'm, I'm biased to, to say that today's players would just absolutely run those boys to death. And you want to talk about physicality and, you know, this and that will body slamming somebody and cross checking somebody <laughs> is, is to me is not basketball. Well, they would have to play the rules of the eighties. That would oh. only be fair for to do for Detroit play the eighties rules. <laughs> so I, what? Yeah, in the '80s, you could I know you could that, foul but and I mean, hack and all that other shit. You're I, talking about two different games at this point. No, anymore. no, no, no. But if they were playing that with the the regular basketball rules from the '80s, and you put the Splash Brothers in it, I would like to see that game played when they still could foul. Okay, and but check. if you're saying that, and you're saying you want to see the football game, you don't think the Dallas Cowboys of the '90s can beat the Chiefs of today? You don't think if a receiver comes across the middle and gets absolutely crushed, that that's going to take away Travis Kelsey's game or something like that? I, You're I, saying you want to play by old rules think, with new games, I but that, I, it would be the same with football. I, I think if you played by the, the the rules of the '80s, still in football, even I still think the Chiefs would win today. I think it would. It, you wouldn't be able to go across the middle like you can today. Well, it doesn't matter. They still guys catching the ball and stuff. I just think athletically, it's a different. 
I think football, I, I don't have a clue. I just would, I would be interesting to see the Pittsburgh Steelers from the seventies, the steel curtain defense. I don't think those guys were undersized compared to guys today. I mean, they just, they, there wasn't a lot of big, big, big men. There was big guys, but compared to today's not even close. I mean, I just, I, I would like to see that happen. I, I, I would be an interesting to see because the game was a lot slower then for sure. But the rules were different, like you said. So it'd be it would be interesting to see what would happen. But yeah, guys, you guys that are nose tackles right now that are three forty running five point oh forties. It's like what back then that was in you know that was never even close to a thing. No, what, so no. it's it's just I don't know. <laughs> Watching the Alabama game, there was you know a guy that was three hundred and forty pounds and he was just wrecking havoc all over the place. It's like you didn't have that even in the NFL back then. I mean, no. so Lawrence. It's, it's crazy just how, yeah, like Lawrence Taylor. I mean, you can yep. talk about him too, but like. He was an enigma, he, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he would fit in. He would be one of the rare guys that would fit into, into today's game to where, like, agility, quickness, toughness. But he was one of a kind. But now every other team's got a Lawrence Taylor on there. Like, Michael Parsons is someone I, that I resonate in as a, as a Lawrence Taylor type guy. A raw, raw athlete, just a raw athlete that yeah. can go from the side. The Cowboys had a guy in the 70s named Ho Thomas Hollywood Henderson, and he was a middle linebacker. He came from Langston University, a little small town, a college in Oklahoma, and he ran a kickoff back. He was a linebacker, but he ran a 4-4, 4-3-5, 4 as a linebacker in 1976, and that was unheard of. But he liked cocaine more than he did football. Yeah, well, you know, it gets it, a lot it, of them. But, but athletically, why, athletic wise, he was like a Miles Garrett type, Lawrence Taylor, these kind of guys. But there's a lot of them today. But back then, there wasn't. Reggie White was Chris Jones of back in the day. The games changed a lot on both sides. It just would, it would be interesting. But I don't, I don't think the great teams when Joe Mon, when when Joe Namath won the Super Bowl with the Jets, I don't even think that team could make the playoffs today. No, just it was way too white. Which means it was slow. Slow. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's let's get, let's get on to this. Uh, Jeff is now the leader in the game at forty-two and twenty-four. I had a really good week. I went thirteen and four last week. What did you hit? Did you hit your lock. And I, hit, upset or what? I hit my upset and my lock. Or no, I hit my lock. I took Buffalo as upset of Buffalo, Baltimore. So I did not hit my upset, but I hit my lock. I took Houston over Jacksonville. Um, you hit your lock of San Francisco. Easy fruit. Big shocker. And that was the only one. Our guest, Jay, did not get any of his locks. We're upset. So, anyways, finished the week at 13 and four. You were 10 and seven. Jay was eight and eight. That means our total for the year so far, we're at 42, 42, 42. I've got 24 losses. You've got 24, five. And the guests have got 26. So, I guess I go first. This is going to be an impossible week for survivor pools. Yeah, here comes another. Here comes another fucking quick survivor pool. Week. Because there is not Good a Lord. there is not a out. There's not just a total lock on this. So here we go. First game is Tampa Bay at Atlanta on Thursday night. That will be played tonight. So what are the standings? You're going first now. I go first this week. I am going to take. Dang it! I hate to. I've got to take Atlanta at home. You can be next, Cold Iron. All right. Um, I think uh, I think with Tampa Bay being a dog, they they've won six of the last seven being underdogs. Atlanta doesn't perform in prime time very well. Very low scoring. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Seems like we got us a fucking ringer on here. Did you hear all them stats he came out with? <laughs> he's he's prepared, he's pre man. Big time Listen, prepared. You don't get on the Pat McAfee show without being prepared a little bit. That's so, exactly right. Yeah, that's right. right. That's right. That's right. So. Um, I, uh, I'm not as elaborate as cold iron here, but I am going with the number one quarterback in fantasy football, Baker Mayfield, uh, there number one fantasy quarterback He is. Yeah. He, no he's, shit. He's number one. No way. Yeah. He's got more than Jaden Daniels. Uh huh. I think it's, I think it's Baker Lamar and then Jaden last I heard. He had a shit week in week three too. That's crazy. Let me look That's it up. Surprising. Let me look it up because he hasn't this, had four this, good this, weeks in a row. This might be hearsay. I think you're hearsay in here. I got twenty dollars that says that says Baker Mayfield is not the number one quarterback in fantasy football right now, point wise. What do you think, Nate? Do you think he is or not? Give me a second, man. I don't know. When you think about it, I, don't, I, I would hard be hard pressed to. I would think Sam Darnold would be better than Tampa than him. He's too. second. I'm sorry by one point. Uh, Lamar Jackson is at one hundred and two. Baker Mayfield one hundred and one. 
I'm actually shocked by that. I know he's had a pretty good year, but he had a real bad week one week. And I picked him on FanDuel or something. He was terrible. Yeah, so that was my bad. I missed it by one point. So sorry. Sorry, people. I was off. Okay, second game. The New York Jets versus Minnesota. In London. In London. Minnesota's favored. <sighs> God almighty. Don't you love London games? <laughs> no, I hate them in... Oh, uh, Jesus. This is a tough one. I don't think it is. I'm going to take the Jets and upset here, but I'm not going to make that my upset. You're up. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take uh, the Vikings. I am also going to take the Vikings. Uh, a little bit of inner turmoil. It looks like Devontae Adams. I read last night that the deal is in place. Uh, they're going to send Hassan Reddick, who has not been there. They're going to send him to Vegas. Devontae Adams to New York. That's what I read last night from an Is inside Hassan source. Is Hassan going to sign a contract extension with the Raiders? <laughs> I have no clue. I'm going to tell you what. You get con you got Max Crosby and Hassan. That's a pretty damn good defensive line. Yeah. That's Too bad they don't play offense. That is true. Mm, Raiders are terrible. Okay, Carolina at Chi-Town. Now, Carolina's been a whole lot better since they put the Red Rocket in. That's right. TCU. But I'm taking Chicago. I, too, am going to take... Uh, take the bears at home for somehow some reason they they seem to play very well at home so i i hate to say it but i'm gonna go with the bears was it a mistake taking uh caleb williams first or they have gone Jaden daniels yes i mean looking at it now i mean hindsight's always 2020 20, but yeah i think if if they would have taken Jaden, they probably would have been a little better off but you know only time will tell with caleb i've I been a I've been a proponent saying that he's not going to be as good as everybody says, you know, but I've been proven wrong before, but I called this in April when they drafted him. I said, they fucked up. You said, you said they should have taken Jaden. Yeah. Also? Just like I said the year before that the Carolina screwed up when they didn't take CJ Stroud. Well, maybe they should start paying you, Jeff. Well, I tell you what, the Carolina is going to have the first pick again this year in the draft. Maybe uh, call me and I'll tell you who to take. <laughs> I mean, it all comes down to offensive lines too. It, you know, like in hard knocks, they're, always concentrating on trying to help Caleb and, you know, get him protected. And that really hasn't been the case. So if he can escape and be healthy and learn every week, I mean, you know, he, he's proven to be a good quarterback when he went at times when he wants to be. So um, I think he's got the demeanor and the mindset to be, you know, to want to be a great quarterback. So only time will tell. Well, I, I can tell you right now, I can guarantee success for him because I'm going to tell you right now, he's soft and that's his problem. He ain't got no dog in him. Well, I will and give, so he probably will take about twelve games and go ape shit crazy because I said that. But he's got a lot of tools around him. But Jaden Daniels, and I'm a Redskin fan, so I'm biased on this. But Jaden Daniels looks like the real deal. His poise has been really impress, very impressive. His his pocket presence and stuff, and he don't have the tools that uh, Caleb has. But the Redskins' offensive line is very good. Brian Robinson has been a stud. So. Anyways, I'm t I'm taking Chicago. You are you taking uh, um, Carolina? I am taking. It's Chicago and Carolina. Yep. And Chicago's favorite. Uh huh. Uh, give me the Red Rocket. That's my upset. Okay. The game of the probably the week probably Baltimore at Cincinnati. Baltimore's favorite at Cincy. Does Cincinnati go one and four on the season, or do they make it to two and three? And if Baltimore loses, they're two and three. Because they're two and two right now. Because they lost their first two games. So what are you going here? Oh, I go first, don't I? Fuck. Right now, Baltimore still my pick to go to the Super Bowl. So I'm taking Baltimore. I think they're going to run all over Cincinnati. So with Lamar and Derrick Henry, no chance. I'm not picking the Ravens. Well, Mark, can't. even though they, even though they screwed me once this year, so <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and pick them again. Well, Mark Andrews have three catches in this game. Eesh. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Give me Baltimore. They look like the real deal. What, the only thing scary about Baltimore is is they, they basically are running a high school offense, it looks like. Just run right, run left, and throw the ball, which is a good offense. It's, it's like a single wing. I'm not knocking that. But when you run your quarterback that much, shit happens, and that's going to be their downfalls if he gets hurt. Right. Because I think uh, their backup quarterback is it uh, – the kid from Oregon that was at Tennessee for a long time, Mariotti or Mariota. 
Is he their backup quarterback? Mariota. I, think, no he, I think he's their, I think he's their backup quarterback. Okay, Buffalo at Houston. Pick, dickhead. That's another one that's not easy to do. Buffalo looked like crap the other night. Houston looked good. I'm going to take Houston at home. Is uh, Do you know what the line is by chance on that? Uh, yeah, I got it right here. Hang on. It it's pretty is... tight, isn't it? it? One, Buffalo's favored by one point. Buffalo is now favored by one, so it's moved. Yep, and that is according to CBSSports.com. Okay, um, I think uh, I think Houston at home is is, is tough. Um, what Bills team are you going to get? They've been super inconsistent. So, um, I mean, granted, they haven't really played. I mean, Miami was terrible at home, so um, I'm gonna go with the Texans on this one. Digs, digs, come, you know, digs break out. Oh, I didn't think about that against Buffalo. So I did not. And with no Von Miller, no Von Miller on, on defense, that could be a problem. Shit. I did, I did so not, I'll, I'll take the Texans. I did not think about the, uh, Oh yeah. <sighs> give me, give me, give me Buffalo in a get right game. I don't love that though. But give me Buffalo in a get-right game. Indianapolis at Jacksonville. Anthony Richardson's quarterback, which means basically any of us three could probably quarterback and get the same thing. Is out he of playing him. though? I had, I saw it might be uh, Flacco. I, I like Flacco I better. I hope it's Flacco because I picked him up in the big baller league, and I could sure need I need him to play this week. They're a better team with Flacco. I agree. Just like Cle- Cleveland was a better team with Flacco than they are with Deshaun Watson. So I'm taking. God dang it. Boy, this is a tough week. Boy, Jacksonville has been shit all year. They got a good roster, but they're terrible. If they don't win, their coach is going to get fired. It's at home? Yeah, I'm going to take Jacksonville. It's in Jacksonville? Yeah. Okay. And they were favored, yeah, too, by last three. I looked. Um, Gosh, this is always the demise of Indianapolis Colts fans is Jacksonville. When you go to clown town, you got people in the stands dressed up like clowns. And they go in there, and Jacksonville just stomps them. Uh, here's a little stat bit for you. The home team has won 12 of the last 13 against Indy and Jacksonville. <laughs> so um, I'm going to stick with my gut. Um, Jacksonville is favorite, so I'm taking Indianapolis to break the curse. And that's going to be my quote-unquote upset of the week. All right, that's his upset right there. I am going to go with Indy. Uh, I don't know if just if Jonathan Taylor's playing. They said it's a mild high ankle sprain, which I don't know how you have a mild high ankle. I don't know how you have a high ankle sprain and play. Uh, he did not practice yesterday. I know. Uh, yeah, but Trey Sermon, it's a running back. That's not like it's a. Quarterback. I'm still, I'm still going with Indy. I'm okay. still going with Indy. Trey Sermon's a big pickup in fantasy football. If Jonathan Taylor don't play. Yep. Okay. <laughs> What an ugly game this is. This is like going back to like 1982. Miami at, in, at New England. I mean, are we, are we going to see Don Strock versus Steve Grogan? I mean, what, what's going on here? Because these teams are ugly. They don't score no points. There is one over-under that is lower than this one. This one's at 36 and a half. Oof. The lowest one is Raiders-Broncos at I'm, 36. I'm taking New England it up. I consider it an upset, but it's not an upset. I almost fall asleep just talking about it. I'm going to take New England. I, too, will take New England. Give me the Pats. New England across the board. Oof, that tells you how bad I Miami mean, they're is. at least a full team, you know? Like, they're, they're not missing anybody. <laughs> well, a quarterback. Well, you know, but they got their guy. Yeah. Cleveland at the Washington Redskins. Hell to the chief, boy. I'm taking the I'm gonna ride this train. Ride them. Redskins. Deshaun Watson has got to be for the bench pretty quick, and Jameis Winston's got to be coming in before long. Although um Washington has lost six of the last seven home games. That was before Little stat that was before, before Kingsbury made it all right. Kingsbury's the man, he's doing it. I, I don't see uh I see Jaden Daniels having a big day again. So, Washington. Give me the Commanders. That is my lock. Raider power. 
I tell you something I think is going to happen. I think you're going to see Amari Cooper get traded to the Kansas City Chiefs next week. Hmm. You're just talking out of your ass at this point. No, I, I read a bunch of deals on it. They, uh, the, the Kansas City is in the market for a receiver now. Of course. And Amari Cooper is not happy in Cleveland. He's got a big salary. And I think I, I would not be surprised to see the Chiefs go get him. They need a receiver. And he's a, he's a stud, and he would be really good in that offense. So I would not be surprised to see that happen. And plus, Cleveland's going to be out. Of, after this week, they're going to be one and four if they lose. They're done. Las Vegas at Denver. Another ugly game. I'm going to take Denver at home just because they're home. Yep. I think too much stuff going on in, in the Vegas locker room. Yep. Uh, obviously, low scoring uh, fair, but I will. I'll go ahead and. Uh, I'll take Denver. I'll take Denver at home, even though I don't like it. Yep, Denver. Arizona at San Francisco. I think this is going to be a pretty good game. The I think this is the 49 and a half is the over under. No, the Ravens Bengals high uh, the same. So about I'm the highest line right there. I'm going with the team with the most underrated quarterback in the history of the NFL, Brock Purdy. He doesn't lose. He's, uh, through 20 games, he's got the highest uh, quarterback rating uh, above, even above Patrick Mahomes. So, again, numbers never lie. I will, uh, I'll take San Francisco. That guy is going to break the bank when he's a when his contract comes up. He might, be, he might be the first seventy million dollar quarterback. If he makes another deep run, I don't know how you don't pay him. He's good. They, they, everybody's oh, it's just a system. It's a system. He's they take all his his tools away and he still wins. Yeah, the guy's good. He's more than just a game manager. He's a damn flat out stud. Okay, so you took the Niners. I'm gonna go Niners also. So. San Francisco across the board. I've got my I've got everything, don't I? My upset and my lock. Yep, I'm I, done. I okay. haven't taken any of those yet, and Nate still hasn't done his lock. Green Bay at the Rams. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna go with Jordan Love. I, too, uh, I will go ahead and take Green Bay, and that will be my lock of the week is Green Bay over the Rams. Yeah, I agree, cheeseheads. Green Bay across the board. Boy, I'll tell you what, I made fun of uh, – who was it that told us that was the best division in football earlier this year? Robbie Iverson. Robbie Iverson, I laughed. And I owe Robbie an apology because that is the best division in football. There's no doubt about it. I thought that the NFC North would be pretty good. Cincinnati sucked it up this year, and Cleveland isn't any good this year. And there's the the, the NFC North is the best. Take out the Bears, yeah. Well, the Bears are still the I mean, decent they're, football they're, team. Yeah, but they're the weakest. Yes, but but I didn't expect Minnesota to be this no. good. No. Sam Darnold's been absolutely outstanding. Yep. Okay, the New York Giants at Seattle. I'm going to have to take Seattle. Yeah, I don't see no chance that the Giants can uh, can make it much of a game. So, uh, which they will, they'll probably win now. But since I said that, but uh, I'll I'll go ahead and take Seattle at home. The Giants look pretty good against Dallas compared to what they've looked like against Dallas the last couple of years. I heard that is the first short week that Dallas has ever played on the road. It is. They've always had the Thanksgiving game on Thursday. I guess before this year, you could, on, you could only play one Thursday yep. game a year. So that was the first time Dallas had to go on the road on a short week. So that might have been some of that. Detroit and Dallas had never had to play on a Thursday game, road, Thursday night road game ever. Right. right. So maybe that had to had something to do with it. But uh, give me Seattle. Uh, I think going across the country is going to hurt. Okay. And I don't know if neighbors might be in concussion protocol, so that'll hurt them. Dallas Cowboys are playing Schittsburg now. Sunday night. Dallas is without Demarcus Lawrence. I don't think Michael Parsons is playing. They still got Mike McCarthy on the on the bench, so that's three things against them right now off the bat. Uh, Brandon Cooks isn't playing, so they've got C.D. Lamb and the other room. The, they got the worst wide receiver. You take you take C.D. Lamb out, and there ain't a there ain't a team out there that's got a worse wide receiver and running backs room than the Dallas Cowboys have. Um, but I'm going to take Dallas Cowboys, and that's my upset for the week. And I hope they lose. Uh, I will go ahead and uh, I, I will do opposite. I'll take Pittsburgh at home. Justin Fields proven that he's uh, been a solid quarterback. He protects the football. He can do. He can make plays if when he wants to. And uh, I think with Dallas's defense kind of 
struggling a little bit without some key players. Uh, I think it. Uh, I think Justin Fields has another big day, no. so I'll take the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, hold on. Hmm. Did Mr. LeBron just say that Justin Fields is a solid quarterback? He is. That's he's what played, I thought. He's he played very well. Why? You know, yeah, I have never heard those two terms in the last two years together. He's good. He's on Pittsburgh now. He's played. He, I, I've got him on two fantasy football teams. He's accounted teams, for every touchdown that but, Pittsburgh has scored. But it, it's just funny when you call him a solid quarterback, but he has been – that he's improved a lot this year. He's a lot better than Russell Wilson. It just proves that the system makes a difference. Uh, if he was you know, if he was in Chicago with the tools they have now, I think he would still be better than what he's than what he was a couple of years ago. I think he's learning the system, but he's not running as much this year as he did the years before. No, he's making the right decisions yes. for once. Yeah. So yeah, he could he could learn a lot from other quarterbacks that run. Russell Wilson could be a good mentor to him. When as the offensive coordinator now, that you know he's he's you know, putting the plays in, in play that he's going to be most able to succeed instead of, you know, with the the Bears, which we all know how that goes with every Bears quarterback the last 20 years or 25 years. It's just been, doesn't matter who they put in there. Well, but uh, when you have a, when you have offensive coordinator that in a good quarterback room, I mean, so. He, he scores 20 points a game. He's got a 80% chance of winning a football game. Yeah. With their defense they have every year. Mm-hmm. Who do you got, Andy? Steelers. Okay. And the game, and my lock is New Orleans at Kansas City, and my lock is the Chiefs. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, and I hope they lose, too. <laughs> uh, I'm, I, can't, uh, I can't bet against Patrick Mahomes at home, so uh, I'll go ahead and take Kansas City. I don't – Derek Carr has had a couple bad weeks. He play, He started out like a – he was shot out of a cannon. Uh, Monday night primetime, I agree. I don't – even without Rasheed Rice, I heard an interesting little conspiracy about this. So, you know, he, he's probably going to – he's going to get suspended for what he did, right? Yep. So, apparently, you can't – if you go on the IR, season-ending IR, if he did tear his ACL – this year will not count towards his suspension. So if you notice, they've not said that he's out and he's not out for the year. They're saying we got more tests to run and then we'll see it. Now that could all be true. He could have just got a bone bruise and a, and a bad looking injury. But the conspiracy is, is that they keep him on the roster all year, hoping that the suspension comes this year and he's able to serve it. I thought they said that they weren't going to do the suspension until next year. That's that's I mean that's what they've said. But if I think the I think the case is like in January or something like that. But if he's not on the roster, that's four games right there. Say he gets a six game or an eight game suspension, he would have served four this year, only if he's on the roster. Now that might not could it be is, ho- could it be is hogwash, the and they seem to shit happens could, could go be their hogwash way. and all that stuff. But like I said, if it is an ACL and he misses this year and he gets suspension next year that's 2 years out of the NFL and that's tough to that's tough to do when you got a short window Jol- plus his mom's stealing shit <laughs> yeah, now that's so, what I, I was mean- going to talk about <laughs> 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 your son plays in the NFL and you're stealing shit off porches yeah. you're a fucking what do they call the porch pirates yeah and she- oh yeah porch pirates was she wearing his fucking yeah, jersey yeah, yeah, yeah. rice mama <laughs> Good. Oh, Jesus. I bet people are so embarrassed. That anyway, that's terrible. Anyway, all that said <laughs> to say I'm taking the Chiefs at home on Monday night, prime time. Uh, Andy Reid's the best coach uh, possibly ever, and he'll have them ready to go. So look for a big Travis Kelsey game. Andy Reid should be up there with one of the top three greatest NFL coaches ever. If he Be- Be- one Bella- sure. Belichick's debatable in the top three for sure. I mean, it's like everything else that's on opinion, but Andy Reid's got to be. Who would be number two? Don Shula? You scoffed at that, but Don Shula was amazing. No, I know, but so it's not modern football, so it don't count, right? Okay. Uh, who would you put at number two? You got Bel- you got Belichick, you got Reed. I mean, who who's kind of that trio? Vince Lombardi. I mean, it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to displace the the mid nineties Cowboys, you know? Yeah, yeah, but Jimmy Johnson yeah. didn't have enough longevity. Yeah, but he would have. Well, but he didn't. I mean, that's there's a lot of How things. How many did he if, win? Could have, would have. Two? Two? And they went to a third one with his lineup? 
but he wasn't a coach though. Uh, I'm not. I'm not knocking Jimmy Johnson was a great football coach, but he went to Miami and didn't do shit. But he I mean, did at Oklahoma State, didn't he? That's not in the NFL. We're talking NFL. You coaching. were knocking him for fucking. Oh, you're talking. You're not talking about the Hurricanes. No, I'm talking. about We went to the Miami Dolphins. Right. No, he was a great college coach. There's no doubt about five. that. So is Jim Harbaugh. But I don't. I don't think that he play, He coached long enough to be considered one of the greatest coaches ever. There's no doubt he was a great football coach. I'm not saying that his five year run was amazing. What he done. I just don't think that you can put him on the list of the greatest coaches ever because he didn't coach long. It's like Guns N' Roses. I can't be the greatest band ever because they didn't put out enough music. I mean, Tony Dungy would be a good... good. Uh, never won at all, though, you know? did he? Yeah. No, he never won the Super Bowl. Yeah, he won it. He did. Yeah, he won it with Indy. Yeah. I thought he was gone when they won it. No. Okay. He's a great coach, but I don't... I mean, he's a great coach. But like Chuck Knoll, another great coach who Tony Dungy coached under. Um, I just I, I I don't know who number two would be, but Randy Reed and Bill Belichick are definitely in the top three. I just don't know who number two would be. And that's that's a very good argument and a good point, but I don't know who you would. Pete Carroll, great coach. I give Jimmy Johnson. Uh, Jimmy Johnson was a great coach, also. But I just don't know that he had the longevity in it. But that's Dan Reeves was a good coach. Coached a long time. Won a lot of games. Yep. Shanahan could be. Oh, Daddy Shanahan? Yeah. Oh. He won a lot of football games, too. He won a couple Super Bowls at Denver. Yeah. So, anyways. So, Nate, where, where's your next hunting trip at? Um, I don't know if uh, – don't know what's going to happen yet. Um, so, probably just stick around. Maybe head to Minnesota uh, a couple times. and But other than that, nothing, nothing really on the books. All right. I'm going to ask you something that's not hunting or football related, but I want your opinion on it. Uh -oh. You are a, uh, and I'm not. You're you're a a big conspiracy guy, or not conspiracy guy. You're a big union guy, correct? Uh, I mean, I do work for a union, yes, right. but it's a uh, it, it's a thin line, I guess. Okay, well, I, I'm not knocking any union or anything. That's not what I'm doing. My question is: Do you think the the Shoreman guys are being uh, strict or being a uh, little greedy on what they're wanting? Aren't they wanting like a seventy five thousand dollar a year raise? Well, I mean, look at like with the UAW with Sean Fain, like he was weird. Like at first they were asking for forty percent raise, and everybody called him out of his mind and just a crazy psychopath that he's you know over trying to do way too much this and that. And then this guy with the longshoreman's asking for seventy seven percent raise, um, which they declined fifty five percent. So, I mean, it's it's kind of hard pressed to say that he's not asking for a little bit too much which I don't know a whole lot about like longshoremen and stuff like that. Um, but I mean, it's kind of hard pressed to say, you know, that he's not asking for a little bit too much. He's being a little too hard headed. I think to when you're, you really on the books and on videos saying that it, he doesn't care about if people lose their jobs in the United States, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. It's all about us and I, and the, you know, and what he represents. So, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty selfish if you're if you're going to take away jobs of the American people and, and be you know ask for kind of astronomical uh, increases. But I guess we'll see what happens. Yeah, they make eighty one a year. Uh, ILA members make a base pay of eighty one thousand a year, and he wants a seventy seven percent increase over six year over six years. No automation, I think, is what they want. So, uh, what what's the numbers on that? Eighty one times point seven seven. 81,000 times 0.77, they're going to be looking at probably around a $65,000 a year raise. 60,000 maybe? Yeah, 60,000 to $62,370. 60 so that yeah, that, that's that's ridiculous. I'm all for people getting paid a fair wage. But I think that's that's going way overboard. They're holding the American people hostage over that. You got to get lever I, le leverage chip. Yeah, they, they got a huge leverage. A 10 or 15% raise, I don't have a problem with. I don't. That's a lot more than most places are getting. Most raises should uh, go go with inflation, and and and, and that's kind of how they do that. The cost of living raise. But you also got to think about the people they're working for, and they're like, well, it's greed on them people's end. Well, those people put up all that money to 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 build these facilities and whatever. So, I don't know all the ins and outs of it. I think they're being really greedy. They're holding the American people hostage, and I don't see a quick solution to this by any means. And it's going to cost a lot of people a lot of jobs and stuff down the road. 
Now, there are going to be some guys that are going to break strike pretty quick. I did see where yesterday they were unloading Carnival cruise ships. 150 dock workers went and helped unload car- cruise ships because they, they, they didn't want it to affect people that are on stuff. But we don't think about that, the cruise lines and right. stuff. Truckers. Uh-huh. How many truckers make a living hauling them cargoes every day? They're going to all be out of work. They don't have nothing to do with the shoreman. Right. It's a bad deal. I think $6 billion a day is what the American people are losing right now. Met, buy stuff made in America. There you go. That's the key. All right, Cold Iron. Right. Thank you very much. This has been a couple years in the making. Yeah, no kidding. It was my pleasure. Appreciate appreciate you guys having me on. Who'd you, who'd you take in the survivor pool this week? I took Kansas City. Um, I think I can't. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to remember. You take Green Bay, but hopefully they don't. Is hopefully don't lose. Like, but I gotta make my pick still. Thank you for running yeah. all that too, dude. Yeah, we appreciate you being on here. Thank you so much. If you play any of our if any, any of our online football games, and this is the man to thank. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Have a great year. God bless you, my friend. Thank you. Absolutely, guys. Thanks. See you, Bob. Bye, bye. Oh, he did. Okay, well, Jeff is stepping out, so that is our weekly pick Thank you for everybody for listening. Thank you, Nate Coldiron, for coming on here, and thank you for running all of our fantasy football stuff. So, see you guys later. Y'all watch for deer. If you're in the market for a new vehicle, please check out Mitch Hall Chevrolet in Haskell, Texas. They can make you a hell of a deal. Call them, do a little bit of price shopping. Uh, they'll take great care of you.